We're here today with Matt Howler, who teaches guitar and who has a profile on findaguitarteacher.com. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for being here today and talking with us, uh, talking to us about your guitar teaching. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Can you tell us first, where do you teach? Uh, what city and what state are you in? I'm in uh, Washington, and I basically have a studio on the lake in Lake Stevens, uh, so it's a little bit outside of Everett, Washington, and about I'd say about a half an hour out of Seattle, Washington. Got it. And do you teach all your lessons there at your studio, or do you also travel? To- um, I actually teach some of the you know the, the hometown people. Uh, probably I probably have about twenty students hometown here, and then I do uh, Skype lessons as well worldwide. Excellent. And if someone wants to contact you for Skype lessons, what's the, the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, probably just try the uh, the best way is via email, which is Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W dot Haller, H-A-L-L-E-R, 1969 at gmail.com. Or you could also call uh, the cell, which is 425-377-1344. Either way. Excellent. That sounds great. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the the guitar lesson climate there in the uh, in the uh, Seattle and surrounding regions? Are there a lot of people there who want to learn guitar? Absolutely. Um, you might recall back in uh, the '90s and well into 2000 and so uh, it was a big Seattle grunge scene here. So there's always been a hot Seattle uh, you know music scene. We've had Jimi Hendrix is a hometown hero, as everybody kind of knows. That's uh, Hart, right, yeah. Uh, Hart, who was just inducted into the Hall of Fame, I believe it was last year. Uh, there's some hometown heroes. I've even played with a couple of those people. Um, just a lot of local talent around here. And even people that aren't famous, there's just amazing talent around here. Uh, people that aren't famous but maybe should be, um, and yes. we're hoping up-and-coming artists. You know. Well, that sounds like a great place to teach guitar up. Absolutely. What styles of guitar do you find your students most often interested in learning? Uh, a little bit of everything, but I would say mostly pop and rock. Um, we've got, I'd say about 80% of the people that I teach are rock, um, and then we have some of the people that come in and want to know what's current, uh, maybe like some Taylor Swift, or, or, yeah, let's see, what's what's hot right now? Taylor Swift, One Direction, I've even taught a couple of Beebs songs, um, so there's just kind of everything, you know, we go from one side of the spectrum to the other side, um, but I pretty much love it all. There's really nothing I really don't like. Um, there may be certain songs I don't like, but it's very rare that I don't have a song that I don't like. So I get a lot of, um, you know, variety, which keeps it interesting for me as well. And what style of music are you personally most interested in? Like if you're playing on your own, what do you play? Um, we definitely play rock and classic rock, um, but I've always got one foot in the blues because that's kind of where all that stuff, as everybody knows, uh, where all that stuff came from. It certainly so, does. Yeah, absolutely. And you said we. Are, are you in a band? Yeah. I'm, well, we kind of, we, I have a, a bunch of people that we play with. We're not really in a band per se. Um, just a lot of the people that are around the area, former, a lot of former rock stars, like I said, a lot of people that probably should be rock stars, but for whatever reason never made it. Right. Uh, so we just have, and we hit a lot of the open mic nights. Um, and the nice thing about that is everybody's kind of regular. You know, you, you recognize people. It's You go into the bars, and it's like you, you know, like at least half the people in the bar. And so it makes for great music, and, you know, you are you know what to expect from the people that are there when you get up on stage and play with them. It's great. Yeah, a feeling of community. It's uh, what music can be exactly. about. Well, right. you have the, the Les Paul there with you. Uh, would you like to mm-hmm. play a little bit? Uh, it doesn't need to be something that you'd show a student, but uh, say if you're sitting at home with the guitar, maybe uh, play a segment of a song that you might play when you're just sitting on your own. Sure. Um, I'm into so much stuff, but I always um, like to pull out the ACDC for the warm-up type of stuff just because uh, he has a lot of cool things that he does. That I think he plays them when he's not even warmed up. I, I have to be a little bit warmed up to do it, but I'll yes. just I'll pare down the uh, the screen here so you can see what I'm doing on the guitar here. Excellent, uh, that'll be great. I might have to move back a little bit. Here. Yeah, why don't you slide back a little bit so we can get uh, all of you plus the guitar? Sure. Okay, so I'll move back a bit here. Time to wake up the roommates. <laughs> <laughs> How's that look? That that looks good, uh, and uh, 
can you sure. put the screen up a little bit just so we'll see your you'll, we'll still see your face? Uh, I can try. We may not be able to just with the. Uh... Okay. Well, and for this part, the guitar is most important. I'd say just go with that. Then we'll we'll get we'll your face back the on screen for this part. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. I always like to start with. Um... You know, just anything that gets my fingers warmed up, and I will admit I'm a little cold right now, so... pretty much the same thing over and over and until the solo that that is awesome which song is that is that acdc yeah that is big gun from acdc um and that i believe is from one of the soundtracks uh what was it with arnold last action hero so it was never on an album that's kind of why i like (laughs) yeah it's a great riff and as they do with so many of their songs it's it's based so strongly in the blues absolutely absolutely Great. Uh, in your lessons, uh, uh, do you teach both adults and children? I do. I have um, mostly adults, but I do have a, a few kids. Um, got, let's see, age ranges from five to, I, sh- I actually have a student that's about 87. Wow. So in the, the five-year-olds, I usually recommend to parents uh, anywhere from five to eight or nine. Uh, book the 30-minute sessions. Most five-year-olds cannot hold an attention span for more than maybe 20 minutes. Yes. <laughs> So half an hour is perfect for the younger. And for your older students, do you work with them for longer lessons? I generally do. And again, it, it just depends on the individual. Uh, but generally, older students are 45 minutes to an hour, somewhere in there. If they're really looking to get their money's worth, they'll usually do 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and, you know, if they're having fun, that goes really fast. It usually does. It, it, it can go very fast. Uh, Absolutely. Um, and... Uh, how often do you work with students? Do you work with students once a week or uh, more than once per week? Uh, yeah, generally, let's see, I would say I probably have about mm, 25 students currently, um, and most of them are weekly. Yes. Yeah, once a week. Uh, I've got a couple that are twice a week, and coincidentally, those are the ones that get better faster. <laughs> That's, uh, and it always works that way, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, what are your fees, Matt? Uh, well, I've got, they're kind of, uh, right now they're negotiable because it's summer, um, and usually I'll have a little bit of a taper off in the summer because people get out and do things, boating or whatever they do in the summer. Um, so, but generally I start at about $40 an hour, um, and that, it just depends on whether you're getting, uh, you know, half an hour or 45 minutes or a full hour. If you do the full hour, it's 40 bucks an hour. Yeah. If you do a half an hour, uh, it's like 25 and if you do 45 minutes, it's like 32, somewhere in that range. Got it. And uh, do you offer guidance to students about uh, what guitars to buy? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, when it comes to buying guitars, everybody kind of has an opinion on what they like. Um, I actually like the Gibsons um, a lot. I have one Stratocaster just because everybody says, well, you got to have at least one Strat. So I bought a 50th anniversary Strat. Yes. But mainly I have my, my Les Pauls. And then recently uh, we have kind of a hometown hero that lives in uh, over in near Redmond area, kind of Redmond, Seattle area, uh, which is Floyd Rose. And he's the guy that invented the, well, he didn't invent the whammy bar, obviously, but he's the one that came up with the double locking tremolo system. So lately I've been buying his uh, Floyd Rose guitars. In fact, I'll show you one here. Yes. They're very, uh, they're very distinguishable because they have the headstock that has no tuning pegs, and you can actually put a pack of cigarettes there if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, so you tune strictly from the bottom. But lately, I've been using these, 
And believe it or not, I probably shouldn't tell anybody the, this, but you can get the American version for, I think, about a thousand. You can get the Chinese or the Japanese versions for about, I bought this for a hundred dollars and it's been one of my best guitars ever. Best bargain. It sounds almost as good as my Les Paul and I only paid a hundred dollars for it. So. That's great to hear. It sounds like for a student just starting out, a deal like that would be perfect to get them into Absolutely. a sounding guitar and also for Absolutely. not that expensive a price. And that's kind of what I lean towards. Um, I also like Guitar Center's Laguna guitars. Yes. The money, they are great. Um, and you can actually pick them up used secondhand. Now, when it comes to guitars, you probably already know secondhand doesn't necessarily mean bad when it comes to guitars. In fact, some of the secondhand guitars do circles around the new guitars. It's all in how it sounds. I even have a friend that plays a Hello Kitty guitar. Uh, we couldn't figure out why it sounded so good until we looked at the back of the headstock and it had a custom stamp uh -huh, in there. Okay. So now it's kind of a gimmick, but uh, when he first got it, he's like, I really don't want this guitar because it's pink and, <laughs> and, it plugged it in and it sounded incredible. And I said, it's all how it sounds. You don't, you shouldn't care what it looks like. So now he actually plays it as a gimmick on stage, and it sounds awesome. So, wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's that's a, a great story. Yeah. Well, before we we end our interview for today, maybe you could tell prospective students watching the video, just in uh, simple terms, what is your approach to teaching them? If you meet a new student who contacts you, what is your plan to help them improve with the guitar? Well, generally, it involves uh, you know assessing where the students at, like if they've had any previous uh, guitar lessons or music lessons in general, and then if they have, um, then we kind of assess the first lesson is just kind of um, you know face to face, one on one, figuring out where they're at in the musical, uh, whatever you call it, your musical history, yes. um, and just once I've determined about where they're at level wise, whether they're beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Then usually we'll set up some sort of a game plan to figure out you know their short-term goals, where they want to be maybe in three to six months on guitar or whatever you know instrument that they're learning, yeah. uh, and then we'll go with the uh, maybe the longer-term goals, so three to five years, and then basically I'll just write out a game plan for you know how we achieve to get there, um, and then I'll find out I generally will find out right away uh, what their favorite artists are or maybe favorite songs. Um, and then we'll have them pick three to four songs, and then we'll start with one of those. I, I usually break in right into, you know, teaching them stuff that they want to learn. Otherwise, they lose interest, um, you know. That, so That's the, the best way to do it. I've found that and the same thing in my guitar teaching as well. Right. Yeah, when I was learning lessons very young, I remember, um, you know, the teacher was teaching me Michael Rowe, the Boat Ashore, and just real simple stuff. Of course. And I, you know, luckily my my parents kept pushing me into it a little bit because I wasn't real, I was kind of bored, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Then I got a teacher that showed me Crazy Train and the whole thing changed. Then I was hooked from that. That, that would be the song to do it. That's the doorway right. into everything else. Absolutely. And coincidentally, that's one of them I get asked for, I would say, probably 50% of the time. People want to learn that song. Wow, that that's great. Uh, so good that you have that in your back pocket. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Matt, I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us today and to talk to us about your guitar teaching. It's been great to hear you describe your teaching and also to hear you play as well. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to do it, and thanks again. Thank you, Matt, and best of luck in your guitar teaching. Thank you. Take care now. Bye-bye.